In this video, we're going to show you how to add a pump to your Exxon Light RO system and turn it into this beast. Here are the tools you'll need to complete this upgrade. A drill with a 5mm drill bit, nice sharp one. A Phillips head screwdriver. A wrench or shifter. Or you can use an 8mm uh, spanner. A nice sharp knife with a sharp blade. Don't use your wife's nice sharp kitchen knives and a fine tip marker. So now Julius is going to demonstrate how to insert the fittings needed. So first we're gonna remove the black plug that's in the inlet hole. And then he's gonna grab the push fit fitting that's gonna go in there, that one there. Insert that by hand. And then we'll tighten that up using an adjustable wrench or shifter. These don't need to be mega tight, just nice and firm in there. Basically the thread should go all the way in until it bottoms out. There we go, that's how that should look. The next one is the port up here, which is the outlet. We'll take that plug out and then we're going to insert that black fitting there. And the same thing again, screw it in until it's firm. Now that the pump has been assembled, you can grab that and put it to the side and bring up your RO system. Now we have the RO unit on the table. You're gonna go ahead and remove the outlet hose from the pre-filter housing and you can just put that up and out of the way and now we're going to remove the three quarter inch tap adapter set that off to the side we're going to reuse that and now we're going to take these two plumbing fittings off and you can undo from just that one hex there that Julius is showing us just using your adjustable wrench there From your remaining plumbing parts, we'll take the push fit and the black fitting there, and we're going to screw that one into the filter housing. Make sure not to cross thread it. Do a few turns by hand and then finish off tightening it with the wrench until firm. So next thing you want to do is go ahead and lay down your RO unit on its front. And you may want to use something to prop it up so it can sit nice and level. So now you should have remaining your pump, your plumbing fittings, hardware, screwdriver, and the marker pen. So Julius is now going to grab the pump and we're going to sit it on the trolley where it's going to live. So you notice he's slid the plate up against the part of the trolley there. And you basically want to get it so the holes here are lined up with the center of the, the tube. So you can see that down here. They're running sort of the center of the top of the tube there. Now, if you have an older RO unit, uh, the Exxon light, your valve here may be sort of facing fully upwards in which you may need to mount your pump a little bit higher. And that's why we've left this hose a little bit longer so you can allow uh, for that. Or if you can, you can rotate your uh, the gate valve here so it faces downwards and then you can have your pump sat down a bit lower. On the newer units, they should be on a, an angle like that. So now that's situated there, we're gonna mark some holes and we can get to drilling some holes. Is that nice and center on the? Is it? Yeah. So mark some holes there. A little bit trickier on this side, but much simpler on this end. Now you can take the pump off 
and we can drill the holes. So we've gone ahead and drilled a couple of holes. If you have a center punch, use it to get a punch hole there ready so it's easier to make uh, the hole. Um, if you don't have a center punch, you can use just your drill. Try and have a nice sharp drill bit to do this, but nice and slow. I'm gonna watch Julius drill this hole now. And you'll slowly get started. And we're gonna drill all the way through both sides of this tube. Make sure your drill is nice and straight up and down, side to side, so you get a straight hole. If you have a countersinking tool, you can use that to clean up the edges of the holes. This is not totally necessary. Uh, you could also use a little bit of coarse sandpaper just to get rid of the burrs on there. Now that your holes are drilled, you can grab your pump and set it in place where it's going to live, making sure to line those holes up. And now we're going to take our four bolts with washers and nuts. I'm going to take that nut off the washer, and then the bolt is going to go from the front side of the RO unit and then put the washer on and then the nylock nut. Now you want to be careful when tightening up these nylock nuts. Um, they have a small nylon ring. If you can kind of see that dark ring there on the nut. If you tighten these up too fast, they can gall up and get a little bit stuck. So it's good to just tighten these up nice and slow. You'll use the Phillips head screwdriver on the underside of the nut. And then you can use a shifter on this side of the nut to hold it as you screw it together. Once you've got all the bolts and nuts just put in there like this, you can actually stand the unit up and tighten them up that way if you prefer, or you can do it laying down. All right, we've got the x iron light stood up now. You can see the bolts aren't tight yet, so Julius is gonna go ahead and tighten up that shifter there until it holds that nut securely. Go ahead and use that screwdriver to tighten them up. So we now have all the bolts tightened up there and now we're going to continue on with the plumbing. So here we have a piece of black John Guest tube and a John Guest push fit fitting. Julius is going to demonstrate how to push those together. And how you pull them apart is the gray collar. You need to push that gray collar down and then you can pull the tube out. They are pretty stiff, but they're very good, very reliable fittings. So we're gonna insert that black tube into the pump. And then we're gonna use this stem elbow that is going to go into the pre-filter housing. And now we need to trim the black tube to basically suit your, your unit. So it's got a really nice little indicating mark. You can see that line there on the, on the push fit fitting which is this line here. So you can basically draw a line on your tube, which might we might use a marker for doing that, maybe not, or use a knife. If you're gonna use a knife, make sure it's very sharp. So you need to take this piece of tubing out. And be a little bit stiff. Now, can you see the mark that you made, Julius? <laughs> maybe a texter will help. There you go, let's use a texter. Okay, you want to do that bit? So I can make a mark. It's black on black, so. Okay, now that we've got a mark, even if it's black on black, you will be able to see the mark. Take your tubing off. And then with a really nice sharp knife, nice slow forward and backwards cuts, and you can cut through that tube. If you try and just push down it with a sharp blade, it'll kind of kink the tubing a bit, but we want it to stay nice and round. You can also work this tubing. You can sort of bend it a bit to get it nice and straight if you need to. But we've just inserted that there and need to actually take that fitting out, push fit that end in, and you can come around and push it in just like, just like that. Do you want me to show you how to do it? 
The last step is to add the tap adapter back onto the pump. Now we need to trim the black hose. So we're gonna take this bottom fitting off here. And take that off your hose. Now that quick connect, we're gonna put that back onto your tap adapter here. I'm gonna put the quick adapter, quick connect tap adapter, there we go. And now you wanna line up the hose with this edge here. So that's basically where you need to cut it. Maybe cut it a little bit lower just to give yourself a little bit of wiggle room, but use that nice sharp, oh yeah, mark it, very good. Use that nice sharp blade to give it a nice clean cut. Take the hose off to do this. So nice long blade, back and forth motion. You'll get through that pretty quickly. There we go. Don't forget to put on the collar. And if one, let's let's talk about this. See how the little teeth are a bit squashed in. What you can do is actually use the hose to to spread those back out, so you don't. So, yeah, so you can work it like that, so they don't get wedged in there the wrong way. You can push the collar down and tighten that up. Now, if the hose is being a little bit tight, you, or if it's you know really cold, you can hold the hose the end of the hose in some boiling water. So boil the kettle and just put some hot water in a mug. You can sit the hose in there and it'll soften the hose and make it easier to tighten this collar up. And that is how you add a pump to your Axion Light RO system. And here is testing and seeing how it runs. So that's what it looks like when it's in there. So just make sure you don't cut your tube too short. Even if you cut it a little bit too long, you can always trim it a bit shorter. But that's how it will look when it's done. Now we have to trim one more hose. I'll show you that now. The last step is to add the tap adapter back onto the pump. Now we need to trim the black hose. So we're gonna take this bottom fitting off here and take that off your hose. Now that quick connect, we're gonna put that back onto your tap adapter here. I'm gonna put the quick adapter, quick connect tap adapter, there we go. And now you wanna line up the hose with this edge here. So that's basically where you need to cut it. Maybe cut it a little bit lower just to give yourself a little bit of wiggle room, but use that nice sharp, oh yeah, mark it, very good. Use that nice sharp blade to give it a nice clean cut. You can take the hose off to do this. So. Nice long blade, back and forth motion. You'll get through that pretty quickly. There we go. Don't forget to put on the collar. And if one, let's let's talk about this. See how the little teeth are a bit squashed in. What you can do is actually use the hose to to spread those back out, so you don't. So, yeah, so you can work it like that, so they don't get wedged in there the wrong way. You can push the collar down and tighten that up. Now, if the hose is being a little bit tight you, or if it's you know really cold, you can hold the, the end of the hose in some boiling water. So boil the kettle and just put some hot water in a mug. You can sit the hose in there and it'll soften the hose and make it easier to tighten this collar up. And that is how you add a pump to your Axion Light RO system. And here is testing and seeing how it runs. Okay, we have the Exxon light with the pump set up here in our testing station. We've got water running through the unit. The water's being purged out. Uh, sorry, the air is being purged out of the system now. Julius is gonna go ahead and plug in the BTA lead to the Anderson plug, which this all comes pre-wired when you buy the upgrade kit. This is the 120 amp hour battery pack that we sell at Window Cleaning World. Use this for testing. We've got a setup uh, going through this hose reel here to mimic using a hose reel and some pole tube here so we can show the different flow rates. So now that the air has been purged out of the system, Julius is going to go ahead and crank that uh, waste valve down. 
I'm going to start to see water come out here, probably some air bubbles as well. I'm going to try very hard not to get our battery wet. Now your results are going to vary a little bit depending on your hose setup that you're using, the brushes you're using, how long your hoses are. But this may not look like a lot of flow. That's because this hose is all coiled up inside that hose reel there. Uh, we can see there's still a bit of air in the system purging out. Now when we turn the pump on, we don't want to have the waste valve cranked all the way down. So, um, you know, minimum waste flow coming out. We do want to have, uh, a, you do want to open it up so we can then adjust. So this is pretty much max flow without the pump and you can use this unit without the pump being on. Okay, we can see this is about the maximum flow coming out of this setup currently. Um, it would increase if we had this hose run out all the way, but for testing, we're just gonna show this. So Julius is actually gonna open up that valve a little bit and then we're gonna turn the pump on and then we can decrease that until we've got the optimal flow we want. So you can go ahead, turn that switch on. We'll hear the pump crank up. You can see our flow is increasing quite a lot. And really this is, uh, if you wanted to run two poles off this system, so you could have two um, hose reels, pole tubes, poles and brushes, this thing cranks out a lot of water. So this is a lot of flow. If Julius goes ahead and, and crank that valve down even more by restricting the waste, we'll get even more flow coming out. A little bit hard to see on camera, but let me try a different angle. Yeah, it's quite a lot of flow. Now this is only coming through eight mil pole tubing. So there's only so much you'll see coming out, but yeah, you could have um, two, two hose reel sets going off this thing and it like absolutely crank out a lot of flow for you. You can show the comparison here the pump off. So this is, this is, it's just getting a bit blown out by the sun. Okay, here we go. So this is pump off and this is pump on. So you've essentially doubled the flow there. But again, as this is running through some eight mil pole tube, that's eight mil outer diameter pole tube, you don't see the results you know, drastically, but with you know, bigger delivery hoses and bigger um, pole tubes, you definitely no notice a massive difference. So yeah, this thing really pumps out a lot of water and is really nice, lightweight and portable. And yeah, that's a quick look at how that works.